Koozies or cozies? I say cozies. 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 <laughs> oh, I mean, it's the original I mean, beer koozie. Right? <laughs> But it's a Cadillac cozy. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. You're all counting in. One, two. No, no, two. wait. Then the camera's on us. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> That's going to be for you. I'm Chad. I play bass and Cadillac. I'm Nick. Guitar, Cadillac. My name's Kit Langfield. I'm the lead singer and one of the guitar players in the band Cadillac. And this is episode 62 of the Funky Moose Records podcast. Happy to be here. <laughs> Hey, I'm Mark. I'm Joel. These episodes of the Sit Down Podcast are brought to you by Funky Moose Records. Uh, subscribe to the channel, like this video, comment below, and ring the bell because it really helps us out, you guys. And uh, check out funkymooserecords.ca for all your used new records, used and new records, and accessories. And merch. Hell yeah. Right on, boys. <laughs> awesome. Welcome. Welcome. Yeah. yeah this thanks. is very much for the invite. We appreciate, uh, you know, being here. I found the place. Okay. Without too much difficulty. Right. Liar. Without too much. I was telling the <laughs> yeah. guys here what was that. I was watching you like turn around in the distance. Oh, they know how terrible I am at like, driving. <laughs> like I get lost on a date. I get lost trying to find my own house. You know, like I'm terrible. I should never be allowed to drive. Then you'll just, you'll just flip a shit hook, like on any random street, like I, <laughs> In the middle of anywhere, you'll just <laughs> okay. I'm going. <laughs> I got somewhere to be, man. That's Remi hilarious. remind me to not in the, get in the car with you. Nick's Nick is the uh, he's the master of mechanical stuff, he is the driver that I feel safest with at all times, more or less. So, you know, when we do eventually get to tour, I guarantee he's going to be doing most of the driving for our own safety, not for any <laughs> selfish reasons. Right on. Do you guys have like like what kind of vehicle would you be driving around in? Do you have like a bus or something or what? No, we have lots of ideas and uh, there's definitely, well, there's like Corbin's old van that uh, yeah. you got looking Chad at. Chad and I are part owners of uh, an 06 caravan actually. <laughs> oh, those are perfect and, touring vans. Oh yeah. No, they, they're great actually. All the seats, they fold into the floor. So it's like, yeah, I think you got quite a bit of room in there. And you can actually fit a, a three-piece band comfortably, and yeah, actually, four you know, of us. But the, yeah, but <laughs> that's our, okay. Or you can just follow. Whatever. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> our guitar player and in our other band, Corbin, he, I don't know, his other vehicle was kind of messing up on him, so he he took it over, and <laughs> he's been driving our van for a while now. So <laughs> that's a farm well, trip now. It's a it's a farm <laughs> unit. It's it's been running like chickens and goats, like out the. God knows where. <laughs> you got to wonder what would smell better, you know, chickens and goats or a van after like a full tour. <laughs> I might have to say chickens and goats. Yeah. <laughs> really seals in the flavor, you know. But yeah. Chad and I were nice and nice enough to let him let him use the van and, you know, we just hope it works good for him. And <laughs> but we are part owners of it, so that would be the vehicle. <laughs> so where whereabouts are you guys right now in swift current okay right yeah. on yeah so we're in swift are current. you guys like born and raised there or where are you guys from yeah actually born and raised swift yeah same yeah so both of us and um Wade i was born in swift or Stuart. anyway yeah yeah swift current Wade, hospital definitely yeah we're all, we're all swift current except for cat where Wait. are you from I was born in Vancouver, but I actually grew up in West Africa. I didn't move to Canada until uh, I think it was 2002. And then I lived in BC until I was 17. And then I joined the army and then I started bouncing around and I've kind of been on the go ever since. I don't stay in one place for much longer than a couple of years. So I've, so, I've been moving around quite a lot. How long have you been in Saskatoon? Uh, I was in Swift Current for a year to the day. And oh. then, <laughs> and then I moved to Saskatoon last August. Okay. Yeah. So I'm still, I still haven't been in Saskatoon for a year. Still all pretty new to me. So we, we have about a year and a half before you move on. Before you decide to move away. Yeah. You know, uh, the, like the, the itchy feet thing 
was definitely much more at play before COVID. And now that's pretty much like, I figure I'm here and I'm invested in this band as well as the other stuff I'm working on with Aspen and Skull Creek. Um, so I might, plus my girlfriend lives in Manitoba. So, you know, it's, it's already long distance and it'd be even harder if I went somewhere else even farther away. Mm -hmm. So for the foreseeable future, I'm here to stay, <laughs> but who knows what the future holds, right? Yeah, definitely. I also want to hear about West Africa. Okay. What do you want to hear? Well, first of all, which country? Uh, I grew up in a country called Gambia, which is a really small country. Uh, so the one of the gross misconceptions about Africa that most people have is they forget that it's a continent and they forget about the sheer fucking size of it. Like you yeah. can fit North and South America into Africa with room to spare. Yeah. So when you say stuff like, oh, I'm from Gambia, they're like, oh, is that like near South Africa? Yeah. And you're like, no, that's like Saskatchewan and Texas. Yeah. It's you know? close to Mali. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it is. Anyway, so um, I lived there until I was uh, 12 and then basically i have a younger brother as well basically there isn't much for post-secondary over there or for high schools your options are really you get homeschooled you do boarding school or you move and my dad's contract with the british government was about to run out so family made a decision that we were going to move and we moved to canada no. oh. cool i wonder why canada it's so bloody cold up here my mom's canadian aha yeah, my wife is canadian yeah. yeah, I know. I know. My dad wanted to move anywhere in the world other than Canada, like <laughs> anywhere. But uh, I think they had a coin toss, and she won that coin toss. But yeah, right for her, it was because she has family over here, and she has an attachment to it. My dad has almost no family, and they were right. all in the UK. So you know, there was a bit more of a separation there for him. So it was more of a. I don't want to say that you know. Uh, that he was reluctant to move here, but I think he just thought that there might be more opportunity in other places kind right. of for, for him and for our family. Right. Um, let's fast forward a little bit then to when you guys all got to meet, like, how did you guys end up hooking up and like forming Cadillac? Kind of, it's really crazy. Like honestly, how we <laughs> ended up meeting Kit and I actually, Chad, and, where do I start? <laughs> start with Chad and start with Wade. And then, because you and I have our own separate thing entirely. Yeah, I guess like being in high school, like we had these like hardcore bands and stuff and different punk bands and just, you know, really just kids messing around. We, we didn't know much. We just kind of, you know, we're just having fun with it. And like, we wanted to play shows mm -hmm. and, that was just, we seen bands and guys like before us do it. Um, a band called One Man Short and Swift Current. And like, you know, we just wanted to be like those guys. We wanted to be able to play shows and stuff. And ever since, like, ever since I was like 13, 14 years old, I just, that was always something that we wanted to do. But um, so Chad was in one of those first bands playing bass. We like hooked. So here, here you go, Chad. Here's a bass. Here's yeah. uh, I think I played for about a month at that point. Yeah, a month, and he was playing a show with us. <laughs> that must be such like, like for there's got to be a lot of bass players out there that all have that same. Well, I got told I was playing bass. So. <laughs> yeah, it was just yeah. like shitty little. It was like a Sears catalog bass with a little Typhoon amp, and it was like, yeah, it was epic. It was amazing. Like Chad did awesome for his for a show. It was awesome. So you, you told him to get into, like, here's a bass, try to learn it, and next next month we'll have a show? or Yeah, pretty much. We showed him the songs. And it was like, yeah. Do I, even, I don't think I had a bass when we first started that band. I was using Corbin's bass. so Yeah, yeah, he was using one of Corbin's basses. And we just totally threw it at him, and he, he was just like, he loved it. He just picked it up. And, and never yeah, looked at any other? Did, did you look at any other instruments? After that, or bass, that's it? Nope. Just all I want to do is play bass. That's it. <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah. One yeah. shot love. <laughs> <laughs> were you, do you, your first gig there in front of people, were you like super nervous? I <laughs> shit in my pants. Yeah. Well, yeah. no doubt, right? Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. Definitely a different feeling for sure. Like even, even with me, like after COVID and stuff, it'd be, 
it take me so long to get used to you know definitely a few more songs to get used to playing in front of people again i'd say for sure when's the last time you guys all played in front of anybody so our uh, our last and first show as cadillac we played one show before the first lockdown hit and i am so grateful that we did because if we hadn't i am i mean like i would love to think that we would have kept pushing as hard as we did to like record and get where we are with it now but if we hadn't played that one show there would always be that like what if that had hung over us for you know almost two years now like can we do it can we do it live you know we needed that little bit of validation and our first show like uh, we played with um uh, scott klein opened uh then it was us and then league of wolves and we played at the acropole and league of wolves invited us to play having known that we had never played a show (laughs) at that point and i think there was a little bit of i don't know tension within the band where it was like what the fuck you invited these guys like who the <laughs> fuck are they like oh really yeah um in in you know yeah. the best way possible yes but i would feel the same way you know if someone was hey, like, that was that, that was even before you even met aspen i think yeah that's true i'd never met any of the guys in league of wolves and they basically like you know aspen vouched for us to play that gig just based on some rough demos we'd recorded on my ipad in nick's basement and also <laughs> Nick has a good relationship with Aspen that, you know, you guys have been friends for a long time. He's worked with you. He knows you. So he knows you can play. So there was that, but yeah, we played the show and it was was phenomenal. It was so good. We had so much fun. I don't think for a first show, it could have gone better. So, you know, that gave us a lot of momentum to kind of carry with us during the writing and recording process that we started to do because we pretty much started recording immediately after we started our first recording Uh, It was actually a Friday the 13th up in Martinsville. And um, there was all this talk of the pandemic going on. And there was a bunch of other weird stuff. There was a full moon. I mean, the sheer volume of alcohol that was consumed (laughs) during those first three days definitely added a bit of, you know, uh, I don't know. uh, We'll we'll say some juju to it. The cops got called. Cops got called. What? Okay, wait, wait. Let's, I want to hear about that. Cops. What happened to... And who called the cops? Well, okay. Uh, the cops got called just like, it was just like a noise complaint, right? Yeah. Cause we were, we were working on stuff like till like midnight. And yeah. It was getting late, but yeah, <laughs> it, was, it was loud. Cause we were, I think we were recording like drum tracks or something. <laughs> Oh, was, like yeah. in someone's house or something or we we were using um i forget was it aspen's sister's house? Aspen's sister's place yeah yeah so she she has a decent place up in martinsville and you know it has a nice big size living room so basically we all you know like brought our uh we brought our sleeping bags like our thermo and stuff right. and we set up beside the kitchen like our little sort of like shanty town <laughs> and then right in the other room in the living room aspen had a set up and we had all the microphones and the baffles and the drum kit and yeah, we just went for it and spent our first three days uh, going hard on it there. Uh, that was mainly, you know, tearing the songs apart and rewriting them. And that was my first real kind of studio experience. Uh, Nick and I recorded another album with a previous punk band of ours called uh, Second Day Sober. But yeah. that was just. I, you know, I was getting into the novel of like how I met you, like throughout the, my travels. Yeah. <laughs> and this all came together. <laughs> But yeah, well, you finish. <laughs> Anywho, so, but that was like, like for Nick's done some studio work before. I don't know about Wade. Chad, was that your first time in the studio as well? Yes. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Like- so, I mean, it was kind of like our first experience as a band, having everything that we had written kind of being put through the grinder And just kind of like, okay, what is essential? How can we trim the fat? Which Aspen is an absolute, like, he's a wizard at that stuff. He's pretty deadly, right? The dude's phenomenal. He pisses me off. He's so good. (laughs) I like like him a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, And just, and and sorry to like blow smoke up Aspen's ass there, but just like a good hearted person too. You know what I mean? Totally. Like not selfish at all. Like if you think of like League of Wolves vouching for you guys to come play the set when you guys hadn't played before yeah you know and then how he kind of like hooked us up together you know like it's just it's all i love his point of view of the music scene and i agree with it wholeheartedly how like everybody should be there to help each other out like and like put everybody's differences away and like if there's a way that we can help you succeed out there like let's why wouldn't we work together 
totally. And and I oh, and yeah. I I get what he's trying to do, and I I have his back a hundred percent. Totally, like, we would not be. Man. I don't want to say we he's, like, he's so good. He's he's the best. Yeah, I don't want to say we wouldn't be anywhere without him and his help, but we wouldn't be anywhere close to where we are now without right. him. So that's all the smoke blowing I'm going to do for now. But yeah, you know, like you're saying with helping people out, you know, certain doors open for you. Like an example, like a guy that I've been uh, spending some time talking to a lot with is Will Ardell. And uh, uh, I don't well, know, I guess his, his actual name, Ardell Elioja. I think I got that right, the Finnish. But uh, he goes by Will Ardell, a country guy. That okay. He's been working with Aspen and we're going to get together oh. and write some. I think I heard of him. All right. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. I'm he, not big he, into country, but I. His latest song that he just put out, it's called Beautiful Kind. It's amazing. It's heart wrenching. But um, all right. Um, I did some album artwork for him. And, uh, you know, just through that, that opened up a door that we're going to start working together a little bit, but that's neither here nor there. We're here to talk about Cadillac. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yes, we are. So there's actually, there's somebody in the band who isn't on the call with us tonight, right? Who are we missing right we're, now? We're missing uh, Wade uh, Boom Hunter. <laughs> Boom Hunter. <laughs> Boom Hunter. Yeah. The, uh, the ever missing drum. He's perpetually not here. <laughs> and, he's, and he's the drummer. Mm -hmm. So that that's like when we had the steadies on. What's his face was an hour late. Oh I yeah, I don't remember his name. Forgive yeah, me, you guys. That's right. We we had a, I don't know. We were talking for a good hour. Yeah, he was in Vancouver and he jumped on. He had, he was sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> right. Just to, to be fair, uh, Wade's not here. It's not his fault. That right. He's not here. Um, he like he hit what he hit us up like an hour before I left to drive out here, saying that you know. He had to go help. He's got with, work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Right. So, he you know. might, the, for those of you listening at home, like he might jump on for like 10, 15 minutes, but like, we're not going to hold our breath on it. Yeah. Right. But um, we actually uh, immortalized uh, sort of the running joke of him not being here. And we, we kind of have that because, you know, at the time the three of us lived in Swift so we could practice together, but he lived out of town. So of course, you know, it's hard, especially with winter. I mean, winter's hard enough to travel, you know, interprovincially. And then with COVID on top of that, obviously there's limitations on what you could do. So it's just yeah. kind of a running joke that he wasn't here. But when we were in the studio at the end of the song Crash and Burn, we have that little sort of talking kind of yeah, like yeah. skit that we did. And um, it's basically the whole skit is about, has anyone seen Wade? <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So here we are. <laughs> without Wade. <laughs> so has anyone seen him yeah that being said, though, like the guy's an, such an incredible drummer and again he pisses me off because we can spend you know like three to six months not talking and you know he'll show up and he'll go oh i haven't even practiced what do the songs sound like again one two three four and he's got them nailed every <laughs> time it's like he didn't miss a beat it's kind of frustrating <laughs> you know because i can't even get mad at the guy <laughs> so you were in a different band together yeah yeah where, yeah where so we are. getting back to where we were before um like how chad and i played in high school and stuff well in i went to like the community college in swift and i was taking the welding program and wade was taking the power engineering and we wade and i had hung out in high school and stuff and jamming here or there but he never really back then i don't think he took drumming as seriously as he does like now nowadays but when we got in college I, I think that's what really got him into it was like him and I would we'd come home we'd or like to my place and we'd smoke like a joint or two and then we just like do these like freestyle jams and we just every single day we we just go on these all out 20 minute long jazz songs and we just like try to make something of it but we do this day in and day out and you, you learn to build a really good chemistry with somebody. And, you know, Wade, I, I couldn't really picture anyone else drumming for this band than Wade, just because he's jammed with me so much and, and with Chad, like throughout all, all the years. It's just, I, I couldn't picture anyone else being where he's sitting. Not only yeah. that, but he's got like such a unique drumming style. Like he's not a standard like rock drummer. He's not a stand, like before Cadillac, he played in a funk band. Mm. you know and like he he worships danny carey from tool oh, so yeah. he's always working these weird little sort of like paradiddles and like these yeah. little sort of just like I don't, I don't know how to describe it he just yeah he plays it differently 
and it works right and it just gives like such an extra element or flavor you know because a lot of our songs when you break them down they're pretty standard you know sort of like they're they're based on you know simple rock country kind of punk riffs and stuff like that Mm yeah and we add flavor and we add you know uh you know subtext and context and you know all all the sort of spices that make it that make it you know good but yeah um his drumming definitely brings them up to a much more interesting level than they would be otherwise. Hell yeah. Yeah. And he's willing to, he wants to put, like he'll stop us and he'll, he'll say, let's put this like really trippy shit in here. Like <laughs> he likes the psychedelic. So it definitely yeah. gives us an edge with our stuff that, you know, makes it a little out there because we don't want to do something. And he, he's really good at really good at it. Yeah, you want to, You don't want to be the same as everybody else. No, fuck right? no. I, yeah. I'd rather not do it. Well, exactly. Yeah. yeah. What's appealing of doing the same thing as everybody? For sure. Totally. I totally get that. Yeah. Did you get, were you listening to them today at all? Yep. Which, which I'm going to put you on the spot. What was your favorite? He does this every time <laughs> Yeah. because he knows I listen kind of in the background. He's and listening, I... but he's not paying attention. Gotcha. <sighs> well, I'm sort of paying attention, but I'm, I'm not paying attention enough to you know, know which song is playing. Okay. Where were you listening? At work. No, I know, but like on Tidal or what? <laughs> yeah. On Tidal? I, yeah. I listened on Spotify today. I had to. Okay. Because I don't have Tidal. Okay. But, um, okay, you're cheap. My, the, I, there's two songs off of the Spotify list that I really enjoyed. Okay. Um, no, nah, fuck. I'm not going to remember the names now. Was it, is it Crash and Burn? Crash and Burn, yeah, that's the one that's got the big skit at the end about where. Right, Crash and Burn and El Dorado. I think out of this, there's six tracks there. Those were the two where, like, I was like working at the same time too, but those yeah. two I like stopped and I was like, oh yeah, I felt it, man. It was good, very cool. good, awesome. Yeah, we've been getting um, like I've got the little sort of like Spotify, you know, there's a Spotify app and then there's like the app for artists, so you can check in and like see how you're doing on everything. I have no idea how anything is doing on anything else other than spotify and youtube because that's pretty much all i check the spotify one like it's it's crazy like we're we've had everything out for it'll have been a month yesterday um since we let's see when do we put out the single we put out the single bless Mar- your heart was it like march 26th yeah march 19th 19th, 19th. Yeah, okay, march 19th yeah yeah and we're at like eight thousand streams already just on spotify Right. Oh, you know, so I have no idea how any of the other stuff is doing, but that definitely makes me feel good, you know? Hell yeah, man. Yeah, considering what? we've only ever played one show. <laughs> one show. <laughs> well, if you have if you have two streams on title, that's me. Okay, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make sure to check in on that. Yeah. Deadly. Yeah. How so, many... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I was just going to say, like, now that I, I let you guys know how... We met, uh, I'm Chad and Wade. With Ken, it was, a diff- it was totally random, like how we first uh, started. We bumped was, into each other on the street. It was like, yeah, it was, it was really random. In Saskatoon? No, in Kamloops. Holy shit. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I still, I remember that night, you know, like, uh, yeah. like vividly. Cause yeah, I had- same. And I was, dude, I was hammered. I know. <laughs> so here, here's what I'm seeing. You're walking around with that guitar case, no. and he goes, "Hey, that's cool." You, t- no, no, something oh. else completely. I I saw a guy that I knew from uh, the Sunshine Coast, and I totally forgot his name. It's our buddy uh, Greasy Mike. Or I Greasy guess Mike. Back. Yeah, Greasy Mike, and uh, him and I used to hang out on the Sunshine Coast together when I was in high school. He had already graduated. He was a bit older, but we ended up playing in like a shitty garage rock band together. He played drums. Um, I think I think I played guitar. I don't even remember. <laughs> it was a while ago, but I bumped into him on the street and I called him the wrong name. I said, Chris. And he went, no, it's Mike, but I know you, you know? And so we kind of had a little bit of a reconnection there. And Mike was hanging out with this group of degenerates. And of that group of degenerates, Nick happened to be one of them. And we all went back to... Uh, his place so uh nick do you want to describe the enterprise yeah it was this like really you know kind of disgusting hole in the ground of a house that was kind of overlooking cam loops 
we called it the enterprise <laughs> and there was like there's it was it was nasty like probably not a place anyone would want to live but <laughs> black widows rotting styrofoam rotting insulation yeah like it was but it was it was a definite party house for sure <laughs> many good times yeah um yeah yeah we and we jammed in the basement which was like i don't know if we're gonna like have to go to the hospital after <laughs> being down right. here <laughs> this type of place you kept your shoes on 100 percent right? <laughs> yeah. the type of whole house you keep, keep your shoes on for it would be like i'd be in the middle of playing a solo or something and i'd see a couple black widows and I'd just step on them as i'm trying to play my <laughs> how solo. big do those suckers get oh they're not that big no no that's no. so creepy though it's just yeah i think it's i don't think they're nearly as deadly as everyone makes them out to be it's just the stigma right you right. just see you yep. know that little red hourglass sort of thing and instantly you're filled with you're filled with dread right that's all from that movie arachnophobia do you remember that shit? Oh shit! Um, yeah, that was a long time ago. Hell yeah! Oh, Ever I since that. I saw that movie, I've been like petrified of any kind of spider. Really? Yeah. Oh man, even like a daddy long legs. I'm like, I if I have to kill it or go near it, like I can and I will. But I would rather just like get my wife to do it. <laughs> oh, I love <laughs> I spiders, man. I'll, I'll hang out with them. I'll play with them all the time. I had a roommate actually uh, when I was living in Vancouver, and she bred spiders, and oh. she had like all kinds of like you know uh, glass jars and little aquariums of like black widows and praying mantises and like all kinds of weird stuff you know yeah so karen like, yeah karen hi karen <laughs> <laughs> yeah no, I can't say, like, amazing roommate though despite the fact she kept fucking black <laughs> widows in her room the black widow stayed in her room oh, oh that's all that <laughs> yeah. yeah that yeah. was making me uncomfortably uh so you want to hear my mom's theory about spiders sure if you hate spiders you don't mind mice but if you hate mice you, you don't mind spiders so i mean i'm okay with either of them yeah. never really thought about that way i mean i'd rather have spiders in my house than mice yeah me too yeah mice stink pretty bad yeah. so would you rather have mice in or, my house yeah i'd rather have neither but fuck that's a good question if I had to choose if I wanted spiders in the house or mice, yeah. fuck, I'd probably pick mice. Really? I probably would. Dude, fucking mice would chew through every cord you have. They'd ruin your whole operation. Yeah. Uh, yeah, right? I know, but I'm so scared of spiders, man. Fuck. I don't know if I, I'd have to, I'd have to just like face my fears. and Im Imagine the mess you'll have if you step on a mouse to kill it. I've stepped on a mouse and killed it before and it squeaks. Because all the air exits out and it's like, beep. <laughs> i've done it lots <laughs> then that's it <laughs> yeah and it's dead that's no it. no splatter no it was just kind of flat oh but yeah that's oh. it definitely squeaks for sure <laughs> there's one of one of those yellow chickens rubber chickens <laughs> yeah <laughs> kind of the same thing um i was gonna ask before when i interrupted there by accident was um i wanted to get like the origins of the name cadillac like for the band okay if how that like where did you guys come up with the name how did that happen when you guys all got together and stuff you know yeah um well i mean uh there's the story of how we came up with it isn't necessarily as important as kind of like symbology we have behind it okay um you know like we we kind of came up with it we had been we'd been playing together for a couple months and we were you know it's one of those things like you can't give yourself your own nickname it has to happen organically right right but I'm a very impatient person. And so pretty much every chance I'd get, I just start spitballing like as many names as I could at these guys and, you know, just bombarding them with all these stupid fucking names. Like what? Oh, I can't, I, I have a list somewhere on my phone. <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> it's on our old band chat, I think. Yeah. We'd have to dig back like years into it, but it was just like, oh my God, it, it would probably be its own like comedy page. Just, nice. you know, <laughs> it's all these names yeah. that just like, I mean, they're just stupid, but, <laughs> um, one of them, as I was spitballing through it, uh, I said Cadillac in the, our text messages and Nick was the one who stopped right there and went, Whoa, Cadillac. And we all kind of stopped and all just kind of, you know, Cadillac, right. <laughs> all just kind of, you know, thought about it a little bit more where, uh, in Swift Current, I mean, I didn't know about this until I moved there. But I don't know, Nick, you want to tell them a little bit about like the Rangeline Tavern and everything? Well, yeah, like there's a small town just south of Swift and 
uh, little Cadillac, and it's just, it's a really like rugged kind of western town. Like, it's still got like dirt streets and stuff. Like, and and it's it, it's got a great uh, tavern there that a lot of bands play there. Corb London, I heard it's actually his favorite place to play is the Rangeline Tavern in Cadillac. Huh. Yeah. But, so that was one of. The... Oh, sorry. It, yeah, it's, it's just one of those things. It's just like an old, kind of forgotten about town that just, it's got a lot of charm. You know, it's got a lot. It, it was just, to me, it seemed like it was perfect. Like, just the name Cadillac. And we're naming, naming it after the after the town, not... Uh, not the car. Not the car. Not at all. <laughs> but, but then you have a song called El Dorado. Yeah. <laughs> the shit makes itself. <laughs> I mean, you know, come on. There's only so much we can do. Yeah. Human. But uh, as well as right before I moved to Swift Current, um, I'd quit my job in Vancouver and me and my dad embarked on a two month road trip in the States. And uh, we both flew to Florida and we rented a van and we drove from Florida to Vancouver together. And one of the spots that was number one on my place was Cadillac Ranch. I'd always wanted to see it. And we right. made that stop. You know, I did all the touristy shit. I climbed all the cars. I spray painted the living fuck out of them. You know, I got to see my uh, my uh, my 78-year-old dad, you know, with a can of spray paint in his hand, you know, <laughs> just tagging these Cadillacs and everything. It was pretty cool, you know. Yeah. He had a lot of fun with it. I could tell at first he was really sort of like, oh, I don't know. You know, he's, he's <laughs> very like ramrod, like, british like military you know his mustache has been perfect like <laughs> my entire life his mustache has never been out of place really yeah so to see him you know just kind of with a can of spray paint in each hand just like am i doing it right is this how you do it, <laughs> it was pretty cool so that had a big effect on me you know on my acoustic guitar uh, as you'll see later when i play some songs i got a cadillac ranch sticker on it you know nick always gives me shit for putting stickers on my guitars but it's all well, the gibson j45 i mean I wouldn't put stickers on them. Oh, it's a J15, not a J15. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it's better. So you have stickers on the guitar sure. itself too? No, no. Oh, okay. I just have the one sticker just on the uh, on the pit guard. But I have written some stuff in paint on the uh, on the headstock. So you know, I'm. It's part of being a tattooer, man. I just want to decorate everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, so it was kind of, yeah. Cadillac just seemed to be the obvious choice, right. you know. Yeah. And there's tons of bands you look it up, and they've got like. You know, the, the first one that comes to mind for me is The Cadillacs, you know. Yep. Um, they did that song Speedo. That's probably their most famous song. It's like old, like, uh, I think it's like 50s, like doo-wop blues. Yeah, yeah. Kind yeah. of thing. It's amazing. I love that sort of stuff. But to, and then there's song, you know, Cadillac Ranch, uh, uh, what, Nitty Gritty Dirt Band, I think. Yeah. 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 So we kind of, you know, we, same time that shit's cool, but we want to distance ourselves from that and, you know. For sure. Yeah. Be just cattle be yourselves yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah that makes sense yeah. and you know if uh if a certain email goes through then there may be an eldorado at some point in our future <laughs> yeah. yeah working on that <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's a that, that's a story for another time okay. okay i was gonna ask about it and then i'm like <laughs> yeah. Man, i'm not supposed to, no. don't want to jinx anything All so right. we're just Fair gonna enough. you know we keep that one to ourselves for now but if oh that's not real wood <laughs> <laughs> yeah. there you go yeah <laughs> If it works out, it's going to be incredible. Sweet. Cool. Yeah. Right Looking on. forward to it. But well, yeah. when it when and if it happens, you come back, you tell us all about it. Sounds good. That's uh, like cool. cool. Awesome. Yeah. Hey, I, so talking about stickers, as you guys can, those of you who are watching, you can see that the kid's got his guitar in front of us here and there is a shit ton of stickers. So are these like all places that you've been or I'm sure each sticker has its own story? I would most, assume, right? Most of them are from tattoo shops, but um. A lot of the, you know, like, like I was saying, tattooers, we've all got stickers. We're all, you know, we're just ruthless in trying to get our product out there and trying to get our name out there. Right. So every tattooer worth of salt has stickers. Um, I don't have personal stickers right now, but I banned stickers. So, you know, it evens out. Um, and that's something like uh, a lot of them on there. Like there's one from, you know, there's a bunch of different band stickers from us. There's band stickers from other bands. And a lot of them kind of have this like... Uh, it's kind of like they made their way onto the guitar as I was traveling through the States. So, you know, okay. I started with my dad. So yeah. we started in Florida, you know, we went up through Alabama and Georgia and Mississippi and we went up to new Orleans and uh, 
I got to party in New Orleans with my sister, Tammy, uh, for the first time in my life. You know, she's 20 years older than me. We stayed in contact during our lives, but you know, she's older and right. she's, you know, I, I should mention too, I have another sister, Sasha, but she lives in the UK. Anyway, so this is me and Tammy's time, but we went to New Orleans and we partied like crazy. It was amazing. A bunch of stickers from there. From then we headed West, you know, we went through, uh, went through Tennessee, went through the, the first night of the drive. Uh, I did all the driving on the trip because, you know, my dad's a little bit older. And at the same time, I wanted to drive just to be able to say that I did. And the first night as we were pulling into uh, into Nashville, it was like the craziest storm that I've ever fucking driven through. Like, I genuinely thought we were going to die. You know, <laughs> like it was just lightning from everywhere, like black clouds. The road was flooded. We were hydroplaning everywhere. There was like six lanes of traffic. Everyone was doing mock chicken for speed. I could not see a thing. You know, and I think me and my dad were both kind of like, you know, in this state of panic and frenzy, screaming at the windshield, like, is that all you got? You know? <laughs> but we made it through and we made it through to the Motel 6, which, you know, was more cigarette stained than an ashtray. And, you know, it was great. And, uh, you know, pumped up my air mattress and dad always got the bed. I got the air mattress on the floor, which is fine with me. But that's probably one of the reasons why my back was so wrecked when I moved to Swift Curve. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, the stickers on the case, you know, they're like, there's Route 66 stickers because we did the entire Route 66 trip. There's, you know, the, uh, the I Love Hank one from where I got to go to Nashville. I got to go to Sun Studios in Memphis. Just all these places. I had this fantastic list, like this bucket list of all these places I've always wanted to see. And, you know, I got to see them all with my dad, which was pretty incredible. Oh, yeah. 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 Sweet. Yeah. Yeah. And New then Orleans, as, soon as, as soon as we got back from Swift, I literally packed in my car and drove or as soon as i got back from the states sorry packed in my car and moved to swift what do, what like urged you or not urged that's the wrong word what made you come to swift from fucking vancouver right well like what drew you there yeah I mean, like continue uh, on with the story of like how we met yeah <laughs> well i mean to uh to paraphrase uh, the blues brothers you know I, i'm on a mission from god not actually yeah. but, <laughs> um I, uh, I don't know, Nick, Nick, do you want to maybe talk about like the phone call I gave you? Well, yeah. I mean, we totally skipped like how Kit and I were in yeah. a band. Right. We like a band, uh, before, like yeah. when that night he Kit came to our place and we, we were jamming and Kit that night, he told me we were, we had this like little bar set up in that house and it was like, it was a total just like wreck. But <laughs> Kit told me, he's like, I'm fucking moving here mark my words i'm moving back here because he was you were going back to the sunshine coast yeah to, I to work I for the summer in loops i was just going to university okay so that was at tru and that's where i met these guys because i was just a university like basically by myself i didn't know anyone in town so bumping into mike on the street was a complete coincidence because if i hadn't have bumped into mike none of this would have happened huh so yeah and he said that night he said he was going back like the next day. He said, mark my words, I'm moving back and we're going to start a band. Because we had a blast that night. We were jamming and boozing until like four in the morning. It was it was awesome. And like at the end of the night, Kit said, mark my words, I'm moving back and we're going to start a band. So how long did it take you to move back? A couple months. Like I, I went back. That's not to, long at all. No. Well, I mean. I went back to the coast. Um, I had uh, like just uh, like semester break. Right. So I went back and I worked for a bit, you know, I just did some construction and, you know, saved up a little bit of cash here and there. And then when I went back for university, instead of staying in, oh no, I did end up staying. So one of the guys who was in our old band, Second Day Sober, uh, Alex Tinney, he played bass. Um, pardon me. He shared this like university housing, uh, like off campus with like a bunch of people. It was a total party house, but Mike lived there as well. And he offered me this really sweet deal. You know, my own room, there's already a bed, which totally ended up to just be the fucking basement. <laughs> you know, everyone's shit and, furnace room. and spiders and furnace. Yeah. And the bed that looked like it had gotten more use than fucking Jenna Jameson's like, <laughs> God, that was gross. But the rent was cheap and the location was good. And, you know, we had a lot of fun eventually. Uh, I mean, you know, just gave me a place to stay so that we could focus on the band. We started out the band as a three piece and that was a lot of fun. And we did some gigs. We eventually turned it into a four piece, which was 
a huge mistake, but we don't need to go into that. And uh, yeah, we had a lot of fun with that band. We played a lot of gigs around Kamloops. Uh, we didn't play anywhere outside of Kamloops, but we got oh, yeah, was of, just sitting down. Yeah, we got to play with a lot of cool bands that you know, like we got to play with like the Creep Show, the Boyds, Sound City Hooligans. You know, all Bill McKenzie's. Them. Yeah, them too. Uh, who else? Uh, Ninja Spy. Ninja Spy. Yeah, that was our first gig, wasn't it? Yeah, Ninja yeah, Spy. It was like drew uh drew mclean like gave us a phone call it was like midnight or something i think and we were all just boozing really hard and he, he gave did he call you or did he call oh, Teddy? drew is like the best promoter yeah i think he contacted me because yeah he, he, he's got he's got a good uh list of bands that he he's he, when they're coming through he he always put us on the bill for some reason or another <laughs> that's because of you he loved you <laughs> i don't know I, I love him too. He's fucking awesome. Yeah, no. He gave he was, us a lot of free beer. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. No, he, and he paid Drew, us. Drew is a great guy. <laughs> but uh yeah, he basically called us up and said, Hey, gig tomorrow, dirty jersey, ninja spy, opener pulled out. You guys want in? So uh obviously we said yes. Right. Yeah. And I stopped drinking right away and started practicing, and the other guys went, Fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> started hammering it but we pulled it off and like it was so much fun and i had never like i don't think i'd ever heard of ninja spy at that point now i've seen them a few times like they're great they're wild right but, yeah, yeah I, i've never heard of them <clears throat> oh okay you'll have to look, them up. Yeah. To look them up because they're they're a really wild band they're like kind of like a ska system of a down it's wild really? oh, yeah. yeah it's like it's mixing crazy. like system of a down and teenage mutant ninja turtles <laughs> <laughs> i've heard of them i've heard of them but i've never really dug into them. and you said boyd's yeah i have a boyd's record here still oh cool yeah yeah they're awesome like out boyd's. of your own personal or no out it's of in the inventory inventory yeah yeah we got to do a lot of cool gigs around there and uh we did that for a while and then eventually like uh sds ended up splitting up and we I moved back to saskatchewan yeah nick came back to swift and i started playing with a couple other bands while i was there i started a band called sinks and cider which is kind of like uh <laughs> i don't like to use the word celtic punk band because that kind of i love that yeah. name sinks and cider sinks and cider i think it was actually so i think karen <laughs> came up with that name like my spider roommate that i was talking about oh, that's so good. i'm pretty sure that was her suggestion so if it was thanks karen but yeah, I was playing in that band, and I played in a bluegrass band called Lost in the Woods. I played stand-up bass in that band. So that was fun for a while, and I did that until I left Kamloops. And then I moved to, I moved back to Abbotsford, and then after Abbotsford, I moved to Victoria, and then from Victoria back to Vancouver, and then from Vancouver to Swift Current. Holy shit, man. Yeah. I but fucking tell, hate tell them, like, the day that you decide you're going to move to call this fuck Saskatchewan. <laughs> so this, this is what I'm joking about with like the mission from God kind of shit. Um, I was in a really like, mentally I was not in a very good place at that point. Like I was living in Vancouver, I was working in a tattoo shop and I just, I don't know, I didn't feel happy. You know, there's, there's on paper, you can be doing really well and you can be making lots of money and you can be busy and you know, things can seem to be going well, but I just wasn't happy. It just wasn't enough. I wasn't fulfilling, you know, whatever it is I needed to do. Something and norm missing, right? Yeah. So normally when I get that way, I do what's called, um, I go on walkabout, which I lifted from Crocodile Dundee, but I just escape. I go somewhere where I'm by myself, no phone, no internet, no social media. And normally that place is Tofino. I like to go to Tofino in the winter and I like to surf. I'll say this. I like to surf, but I'm not a surfer, you know, <laughs> okay. it's fun, but I'm not good at it. And that's, I think part of why it's so much fun because I just get the shit beaten out of me, right? you know, by nature there's something very cathartic about it and it's very sort of like spiritually uplifting uh just you know almost being drowned right you know kind of like like willingly being waterboarded <laughs> <laughs> spiritually but uh yeah so i would go up to tofino and this time i went up and uh, i think i just like rented like a motel or something for a few days and I just, you know, day after day, like it was really stormy. I was just getting the shit beaten out of me every day. Every day I was just like a drowned rat. 
And then on the final day, it was like eight in the morning. I got up early. I went in the water. It was dark. It was stormy. There was not a single person on the beach, just me, which in hindsight is pretty fucking stupid <laughs> because, you know, obviously you get hit in the head with your board, you go under and right. then you yeah. know, yeah. shark food. Shit can happen. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That being said, you know, I was lucky enough that that didn't happen. While I was out there, it was just like wave after wave after wave. And I was just getting like totally fucking annihilated. And I just had this like shining crystal clear thought that just like came out of nowhere, you know, a moment of clarity, if you will. And all it said was go get Nick. And that was it. And that was all that just like played through my head. And so soon, and actually right after that, I got a really good run. I got a really sick fucking run, like right down onto the, basically onto the sand. And that was it for me. I went and packed up and I went back to the motel room. Instantly I called Nick and just basically said the same thing. Like Nick, I'm moving to Swift Current. We're starting a fucking band. And the first thing he said was, you're out of your goddamn mind. <laughs> yeah. So it actually took me convincing him that I was going to move there because he kept saying, no. No, why right no you don't what <laughs> you know? that's hilarious yeah, like, not from, i just wanted didn't want to really inconvenience his life that much to pack up and move all the fucking way over here but i mean i think if anything i've inconvenienced your life more just my presence <laughs> just going like okay i'm here it's time to fucking work stop what you're doing you know <laughs> And so that makes me think of like Tenacious D as well, right? Something like that, how he goes on the journey to find yeah. the best rock and roll band ever. Yeah. That's I mean, it's kind of like that. Yeah. That's yeah. yeah. so what I tell everyone. We're the best band you've never heard of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, so but now we've got an album out, so you can actually hear us. Yeah, yeah. Right. And okay, so what? when did the album come out again? Did we say March 19th? March 19th. Or was that one of the singles? I think the single. the single. And then the... The album came out the Friday after that. So that would have been the twenty so, six. Okay, so that okay. I knew I saw March twenty sixth somewhere. All right, that makes sense. Yeah. 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 A lot of work. A lot of work into that. Mm -hmm. And that was recorded at Skull Creek? Yeah. All of it recorded at Skull Creek. Oh, yeah. Uh twice actually. What do you mean? You had to we, redo it all? We so this was kind of like at first, it's for about five minutes to me. I was pretty crushed when I found out about this. Aspen had some problems with his hard drive and he lost a shitload of files no. of like stuff that he'd recorded, which was like pretty devastating, you know, for, like I said, for about five minutes and then kind of thought like, wait a minute, this is a second chance to do it bigger, better and badder than it was the first time, you know, and mm. I'm so glad that that happened <clears throat> because the second run we took at it, me too. Uh, we were all like, we, we were unified at that point. When we first started recording, we had the songs, but the songs got torn apart and rebuilt and we were all kind of shaky and we it weren't natural. like, it, yeah, right. it was, we, we weren't sort of like united as a band yet, but when we came back to do it a second time, we had an identity. We had an identity as a band. We understood each other better, you know, personally and musically. We knew what we wanted and we didn't have to tear everything apart so we could just get to work on the stuff that mattered. You know. So and, so how much time was in between that from the first time you recorded it to the second time? I would say, I think we started recording in March. March, March last year. And then the second pass was in September. Okay. Yeah, that's well, a yeah, good there, there was a, It happened out. over overnight where Aspen just lost his files. Yeah. <laughs> and we had to pretty much start from scratch again. There was some stuff that was left over, but it, it was almost like, oh, do we just redo it while we're here? Yeah. Kind of thing. And it was like, we, we had a second chance at redoing it because I know I went through, I actually had the shitty end of the stick. I got to record my guitar at the end of the weekend. <laughs> and it was after... Oh. We'd been through the whole weekend. It was Sunday, and the first round through, it was it was rough. We torn these songs apart, and we didn't really we didn't feel comfortable playing them that way. And you know, it would it just didn't feel natural. That and the copious amounts of beer that wow. we <laughs> that didn't help. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it, it just it was it was great in a way. We got to have what we what we did, and then actually jam it and practice as a band as a, as a unit and then 
and then eventually go back to the studio. And it just so happens that our our files uh, were gone, so we had to re-record the album pretty much start to finish anyways. And it was, huh. it, I think it turned out way better the second time. Definitely. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. And it, like, not, not cool that he lost it, but cool that, it gave you that. I, that I love how chance. you were able to like flip that into like a positive. Yeah. Right. Oh, and like see, take it as a sign, right? You guys like where it's like, totally. it's, it's happening for a reason. Mm-hmm. Like, and this must be like a second chance kind of thing. I love that. Yeah. Totally. Aspen, yeah. Aspen felt it too. Like in the, within the first few tracks, like it was just like, the, he's like, this is way better content. Like this way, right. these way better takes. And, than you guys were doing before I, I, like this is gonna be awesome and it turned out way more awesome so we're, we're really stoked about that actually that and all our skills individually had improved like tenfold as well you know like uh before this band i've been a front man for three bands and this is the first band that i've actually taken responsibility as a singer you know <laughs> i was a singer in the other ones but i always blew it off as like well, I can play guitar and well, you know, I've got a lot of energy on stage. Who cares if I blow my voice out? Who cares if it doesn't sound great? Whatever, you know, fuck it. We'll do it live. Yeah. So this is the first band that's really forced me to kind of take a step back and kind of own that and be like, okay, you need to stop making excuses. You need to actually put some work into this. You need to make an effort. And same with Nick, like with our harmonies and everything that we've been doing, we've been working on that like crazy. Chad's bass playing has fucking gotten exponentially better like leaps and bounds it's insane how much better he is now than when we first started so i mean you know we're all just better mu- we we were all just better musicians you know collectively and individually when we got that second take on it right. you can hear it yeah yeah cool so, it was that, a lot of fun doing it too like the second time around we were having a lot of fun yeah the how fr- long so, first time not so much well, first, the first time was a lot of fun too yeah. but probably pretty here. nervous i would assume right well i also blame myself a little bit for that because i put uh i have a habit of putting a lot of pressure on people like it's kind of like i don't know maybe a leftover from the military kind of thing but it's very much like a you know kind of breathing down your neck like perfection uh, yeah. looking for perfection <laughs> i don't know if i'm looking for perfection just sort of like you know do it now do it again right That's oh i know someone who oh really oh, okay we won't mention names no well, that's like okay what the hell was i giving you oh those fucking headphones right so mark <laughs> texted me today and he's like hey message kit because it i think one well the other set of headphones is like missing somewhere and he couldn't find it right yeah. so he messages me to message you to see if like you have a set that you can bring or whatever and i'm like dude just fucking pick one up like this isn't the first and last time like we're gonna have other people in house like you're gonna need another set yeah but no did he buy another set no like it'd be just He's Honestly, like, I'm not like you. I can't just do things impulsively. I'm like, it's not impulsive. Like you're going to need it is another impulsive. set another it's, time. Like I have to buy one. something in three hours from Jeez. now. That's stressful. No. Uh, it's not stressful. I have yeah. a reason. So for that's that. the kind of like, you'd think we're fucking married, man. Like we bicker over head. You're not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not yet. Not yet. Hey, if you need an ordained minister. <laughs> really? Yeah. For reals. Gay marriage too? Yeah. Whatever, man. It's Does all it- good. Is it? Um... I'm not really religious, but like you can be whatever you want. You know. Yeah. Uh, no. Okay. Yeah. 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 I've seen Kit yeah. Married yeah. My two good friends. I'm not talk about that. Actually, Kit married my two good friends in Kamloops, uh, Travis and Sam. Oh yeah. It's a great awesome. party. I'm booked for another one in November. Uh, you know, we'll we'll see what everything's like with the travel regulations because it's in BC, so that may get postponed. But right. uh, potentially, I'm booked for one where I will be dressed as Elvis. Oh, oh, you know, sweet. that's another one off the bucket list. <laughs> that's awesome, buddy. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty stoked for that. I think I'm more just stoked to dress up as Elvis than I am for anything else. <laughs> sweet. <laughs> so okay, so you guys. <laughs> I'm trying to, okay, you said. I was I was thinking about the conversation we had with Shad last week. Which one? About marriage. Oh, yeah, where I was like, why would you get married? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> um, I've been with the same girl for nine, fuck, nine years? Since okay. 2012. Nine years. And we're not married. Still common law. We got a six-year-old, all that stuff. So we're constantly being asked about that, right? Of course. Yeah. And it's like, I'm always like, just to 
push buttons back. It's like, well, why? Like, we've got a six year old. We live together. Like, everything is the same yeah. as if we were married, just because we're not. Like, legally, we are. You know what I mean? Totally. So it's like, I don't need a piece of paper to say that I'm going to be faithful or commit. Mm -hmm. Like, she trusts me. I trust her, and we're good. But, anyways, off air. We'll get, I might have to <laughs> sniff that part out. But, um, <laughs> no, I was going to, I wanted to ask. So, you guys, you go back and you do your second take yeah. on the recording, right? Mm -hmm. And then now was that recording, that was pre-COVID, the recording? We The first recording we did was right before, was, was right before COVID. It was the same night that Juno's got canceled. And we're yeah. kind of right when it shit, shit at the fan, kind of in a way. Fuck. No. We had tickets for the Junos. Yeah, we were supposed to go there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was the night we started recording, Friday the 13th. <laughs> and then the second time uh, we went about it, like COVID was happening, but the restrictions weren't like completely yeah. in place yet. You know, it right. was still at the point where masks weren't mandatory. Right. Okay. You know, it was like if you were working, you had to wear a mask. But if you were just walking around on the street or going to a grocery store, yeah, that sort of thing, we set it up in a way where it was still, you know, following the guidelines, yeah. Yeah. you know, but the guidelines then were different than what they are now. Yeah. So then, yeah, so where I'm going at with this is now you do your second recording, you've got that all done and fucking COVID's here, you can't go play any gigs, right? Right. So like we, we already talked about how it's released on Spotify and stuff like that. But since, since then, like, have you guys still been jamming out or like keeping it fresh? You know what I mean? Well, I mean, these guys, you know, cause obviously yeah. Wade and I are separate, so it's harder for us, but I mean, these guys are at it. Chad and I are holding it down pretty yeah. good. Chad's in our yeah. bubble. He lives on his own and he comes over to our place. Just to be clear about this. Yeah. We're using we're our bubble. guidelines. <laughs> Right, right, right. <laughs> but yeah, I know it's it's kind of the luxury of being the two members of the band that actually live in the same city. Right. <laughs> but. Yeah, but every every Thursday we usually get together, we jam some songs, we have some fun, play some covers, and kind of goof off a bit. But right, you know, we want to keep the set fresh and stuff. And we know Wade will just he'll just come in like. Like that, you know, he, like you always does. <laughs> Kid, I'm kind of worried about, you know, you got to get, get down here soon. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm slacking, you know, I'm terrible. Yeah. But never, no, just never, usually, never do anything. <laughs> usually when, when we all jam, like it, it, it takes like only a couple hours and like we, it's just like it snaps. Yeah. Right. And it, 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 so it's good, really good that way. I'm, I'm Really fortunate to have like this this group of guys to play with because, you know, I, I'm I'm done playing with you know guys that just like oh what was that again and this and <laughs> it just it I'm, it's really good to to have some uh, like professional guys to play with you know it seems right. like people you know. who are serious about it right yeah for sure yeah yeah yeah, yeah it, it, it's really good we're definitely all in the same mindset like we you know kind of. When, before I moved to Swift, you know, when I kind of talked with Nick, I kind of said, you know, if I do this, we're doing it for real, Yeah. you know, and I'm not going to come up there if you're not 100% in, you know, to which he said, you know, obviously, yes, I'm in, you know, I'll do everything I can. I'll do the best I can. And he was the one that suggested Chad and Wade. So Nick essentially put the band together and I just showed up. And went, you know, okay, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Let's go. Right. <laughs> yeah. And it worked out. And it worked out. Yeah. Well, first, and it's, first and it's working. Right. Yeah. Considering well, what the world is going through, like I would like feel comfortable saying that it's working. Yeah. I mean, you guys are yeah. doing what you can when you can. Yeah, of course. Right. Yeah. And, and I mean, it, and it's working, right. You've got all those plays on Spotify and shit like that. And we're here now and we're going to try and help and get that out there too. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we've had like a shitload of support from, I mean, basically everyone, you know, I think one of the most common things we hear, and it's, you know, it's kind of funny, you know, it's a backhanded compliment, but it's a compliment nonetheless, which is kind of like, you guys are good. And it's like, thanks. Yeah, we know. But then, you know, they kind of lean in and they're like, no, like, like, I mean it. Yeah. <laughs> you guys are good. And it's like, I would have taken that the first time, but I appreciate it. You know, well, like, that's, well that, you know, I, I can kind of relate to that too, because like every week we've got a band on, right? right? 
And I feel like I am saying that a lot too. Right. And I, and I generally, like, I mean it, yeah. you know, genuinely, but I say it every week. Yeah. So then I start like, we're on episode 62 here. Right. So I've said that like freaking 50 times already. So I, I, I in my so head, the other 12 bands, you didn't, we, we didn't the, have guests <laughs> when we started the, the show. Actually. The first 12 episodes didn't have yeah. guests. Gotcha. Mark, Mark was the one I didn't like. At yeah. the start. No, just kidding. Okay. Still, but, we won't name names. Yeah. Still doesn't. Yeah. But but that's just it, right? So I'm saying it every week, and I honestly mean it. But I feel in my head that it's coming off as fake because I say it every week. So then it's like, but no, you guys are really good. Like I really do. Yeah. I did like Crash and Burn. Yeah. Like it really did make me stop and like stop what I'm doing and actually listen to it. Well, like, I like to think that if we stopped, true. you know, we wouldn't have gotten an invite. Right. Exactly. Like, and yeah, that's exactly it. So when I listen, no word of a lie. I don't even think I listened to 30 seconds of it. And I was like, yep. Yeah, okay. Like, can, can we get together? Can we do this? And then after that, I listened to everything. Right. But yeah. Yeah. Like it doesn't, we, you can, when you listen that so much though, we appreciate that so much. Yeah. But, but I mean, in all honesty, like you can listen to 30 seconds of a song and know if you're going to like it or not. Totally. Yeah. yeah. Right. Like, and, and that's how it was with you guys. Like I, I think it was something on Instagram and I was like 30 seconds deep and I was like, oh yeah, like reached out right away. Let's do this. So, one yeah. of the uh, one of the biggest compliments the songs got. Um, I've been kind of talking with Kurt Dahl a little bit here and okay. there. And uh, originally, when I started talking to him, he said, "Send me the tracks. You know, I want to hear what you got." So we hadn't uh, uploaded them yet. So I sent him kind of like the demo files and everything. He listened to them and he wrote me back. And he basically, you know, he hit every sort of reference that I was going for. We originally touched on this, you know, it was like, yeah, I'm hearing little bits of like drive by truckers and like a little bit of social distortion, you know, some like grittier kind of Tom Petty, kind of like the mojo style sort of thing. And instantly I was just like, oh, it's all been worth it. You know, yeah. like that he was it, a right? huge yeah, yeah. compliment, especially coming from someone like him. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he's definitely, he knows his shit for sure. Yeah. Like what is, so he's, a, he's the, okay. He's a lawyer. Yeah. yeah. Right. But is he like, in all of Canada or is he just like the lawyer for Saskatchewan or like all the whole music association or you he, know what I mean? Well, he even, um, uh, does law stuff in the U S cause he did, he did something for, I know he has clients in the U S yeah. You know, like, uh, I, I'm not completely familiar on all the ins and outs of his work. Yeah. I just know that he's the dude. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah so a he's few, the... a few guests that like, or aff affiliated or associate with him kind of thing like brendan yep. right knows him too and so he's um uh, an entertainment lawyer mm -hmm. he is the president, president of the or sask a... music association i think yeah and the drummer for one bad son right yeah also you know that... family man dad yeah all the other stuff that comes right. with it that's a pretty cool resume to have, I think. Yeah, totally. You know, he's not an ordained minister, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> True. Yeah. Um, uh, one question. Um, seeing as Nick's running off to the bathroom, can I do the same? No. Nope. Yes, because <laughs> I need to as well. I was yeah, actually sure. just going to say Piss that. break, T.O. So we're going to, yeah, this is game okay. off. Do what we got to do. Go ahead and I'll go cool. after you. Maybe throw an ad in there or something. Okay. Yeah. Three, so okay, two, we're one. we're back on, guys. Um, yeah, welcome back. <laughs> but yeah, I want to give a shout out to uh, Mickey Mills. You know who you are. Uh, that's how I got in touch with Kate. I actually work with her. Like I know who she is, and she had oh, yeah. re or she. What did she do? She like reshared something on Instagram. No, she commented on one of your Instagram videos. I think. Okay. Okay. Yeah, one of the and, posts or something. I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and then tagged oh, us in it. Yeah. There's been so many people that like, you know, I don't know too many people. I think they're mainly, you know, like Swift Current people and stuff like that who know you guys more than they know me. But like, there's been so many people just coming out and resharing and reposting and just like giving us all the love and everything and to whoever you are. I probably don't know you, but thank you. There you go. And yeah. keep doing it. And please, yeah. please yeah. keep doing yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> please keep doing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, I want to thank Jess for, you know, actually hooking that up with you guys. That's, that's great. Yeah. yeah. She definitely says hello. <laughs> oh, well, hi back. Yeah. It's been a long time. You call, I don't know. Have you, 
I don't know if she only got that nickname through through work or like do you know her as Mickey Mills or no? Oh, I'm sure she's got a few nicknames around this town. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe. Oh. Right. <laughs> well, there you know, nothing bad. But, you know. <laughs> right? Yeah. Disclaimer. But I, she, she was always awesome. I remember her as just being so full of laughter and just, you know, just really, really down to earth chick. Yeah, she still is, man, for sure. So shout out to Mickey Mills. Um <laughs> So I think what we're going to do, like you had mentioned playing some music, right? But before we do that, um, we're pretty close to the end of the episode, guys. So what I, what I will ask is if like, there's anywhere you guys want to direct our listeners to like where they can find you, where's the best place, you know, YouTube, Spotify, that kind of thing in your handles. Um, And then we'll start just kind of like getting you set up and we'll close the episode with, with one of your songs on acoustic. Yeah. um, I would say, uh, Probably the easiest places to find our music would be like uh, Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube. Uh, you know, we went through CD Baby, so we've uploaded to pretty much. Yeah, what was yours called? Title. Title. Yeah. Do you know yeah. what title is? No. So, yeah, I'll let Mark take. That's yeah. his baby. Title Pandora. Be. I think we're even on like fucking throwback. We're on like Caesar Apple. and like. <laughs> Yeah, we're on like all, all kinds. Of, like as far as CD Baby, they say they put it on like eighty nine different streaming platforms. So. Okay. Are you guys like, if I do a story on Instagram, can I like put your song in the background? Yeah, you sure can. Uh, The singles, Bless Your Heart, but the rest of the album is great. You know, each song's a little bit different. I got a little bit of a different flavor on there. We've got an Instagram page. It's uh, at Cadillac underscore FTW. We've also got a band website, which was actually built by Wade, uh, www.cadillacband.com. Awesome imagery on there too. Yeah. So I was on there today. Wade, like, oh like him building that website was just so like it's awesome you know it's nice to have because the three of us are pretty technologically uh <laughs> oh, dude, kate had to set the computer up to, for us like <laughs> it was easier for me to come do this in person than to try and do it <laughs> yeah. zoom. well that's yeah. what you told you were like i just downloaded zoom now i don't know <laughs> yeah. that was like the other day but yeah, if you guys go on to our website, it's got a link to absolutely everything, our music, our merchandise, um, all information about us and what we will be up to in the future. We are currently work. Yeah, there we go. Shameless plug. So here's some of the merch right there. Go check it out. You know, buy something for yourself, for your baby, for your grandma, for, you know, your boyfriend, for your boyfriend's girlfriend, whoever. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. And, uh, okay. Yeah. All the proceeds go towards us basically building the band to be bigger, you know? I thought, I thought you were going to leave it right there. All the proceeds go to us, period. <laughs> there are literally hundreds and thousands of people all over the world. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Anyway. But uh, yeah, we're going to be working on music videos and stuff in the future. Oh, and, yeah. You know, just we're going to at some point, you know, if we can't play, tour. Play another show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's your long-term goal? Play two shows. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we are thinking about getting in and not wasting any time, maybe starting a second album, which we would obviously be doing with Skull Creek again because we just had such a fantastic experience right. working with Aspen. I don't see why we'd go to anyone else as long as we're here. You know, oh, if yeah. Dave Cobb or Rick Rubin call me up and, you know, want to work with me, then sorry, Aspen. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> if anything, I would just say, can I bring him with me? You know? yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, for sure. Aspen would, well, and that would goes, definitely come with you. Yeah. That would go back to that whole thing that we were talking about earlier, right? Like include everybody and get everybody, yeah. help everybody out. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, all right. So we're going to end that there, you guys. And you guys stay on with us. And we're going to, you can tune your guitar, do all that. Okay. Um. How'd that sound? Don't know. Sound pretty good. This is a song off of Cadillac's uh, debut album, El Dorado. This song is called Bad Lullabies. (laughs) 
She lost her way once, twice before. Yeah, I didn't know she had used to me no more. But I couldn't give just what it takes. I ran out of excuses for all of her mistakes. Get no joy out of goodbyes. Cover up my tracks, put on my new disguise. Darling, I hope you buy my lies. They're just scars. Cover. And if I could try to make it right, but yeah, it's too damn easy to slip out in the night. Well, yeah, it's like these things that you always in the same. One more night and a new curse on our name. Get no joy out of goodbye. Cover up my tracks, put on my new disguise. Down, I hope you buy my lies. They're just scars covered in bad lullabies. Get no joy out of goodbyes. Cover up my tracks, put on my new disguise. Darling, I hope you buy my lies. They're just scars covered. But if we say a real goodbye, baby, your scars will heal with a brand new lullaby. Nothing here we Baby, your scars will heal. We'll just have bad lullabies. There we go. Bad lullabies. Well done, Kitchener. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, duh, but yeah. <laughs> you've been practicing <laughs> i've been trying man i can't sing in my apartment the walls are too thin so i've kind of been doing like <laughs> i have a skip I, beat, dude. I uh i actually warned my family that you will be singing songs thank you the, ki the kids are in bed <laughs> but take it screw them <laughs> that was fucking dope man that was yeah. awesome thanks yeah. man yeah you say Hell that yeah. to all the bands yeah, yeah, that I is say true. to everybody, I but I does. genuinely, <laughs> gen I can't even say that word, genuinely. Thank you. Genuinely. Appreciate that is probably <laughs> one of my personal favorite songs on the album. Um, I don't know, there's just something about it that, like, it's probably the only song on the album that I want to listen to, like, over and over and over. All the other ones, you know, you kind of run into that, being someone who recorded it yourself, you know, you love it, but at the same time, there's all that little, it's kind of weird listening to yourself. Right. Well, yeah. that's, I think I asked, I don't remember who I asked that, but I was always curious about that. Like being a musician, right. When you're creating an album or you've got, let's say 10 songs or whatever, like there's no deciding which one's going to be the big hit. You know what I mean? Yeah. So do you ever get worried? Like the one song that you don't really want to play over and over again? Like, do you ever see yourself? Fuck, I'm stuck playing that song for 30 years or whatever. Like you look at, uh, let's say like Garth Brooks or something, having to sing that same shit that he wrote back in like 92. Nick has a funny story about this. Actually. I think it's uh, up against the wall, redneck mother. Oh yeah. No, Ray Wiley Hubbard, <laughs> his live version of that song. He yeah. mentions how he's like, if <laughs> Something about having to play that song for 25 years. Well, that's, I mean, that's kind of like, that's kind of scary. You know, yeah, you can change it a little bit. You know what? At, or do I'm you not think about that? Where I'm 25 years in and I'm sick singing the same song, 
that's a problem I want. Yeah, I suppose, right? Yeah, that's I like mean, that, that's yeah. like the old 25 I'm, years in. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, we're all old already. <laughs> I'm the only one in the band that's still in their 20s. Everyone else is, you know, bypassed. I'm 32. Yeah. Chad, you're 33, right? Uh, yep. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? Yeah. Sure. I think I'm 33. How old's Wade? Is Wade 30? Wade's 33 uh, too. Okay. Yeah, same He's same. 33. Yeah, these two are 33 and I'm 32. Holy fuck. And I'm 29. Jesus. You guys are all fucking young. Yeah. yeah. All of you. <laughs> We've all just been road hard and put away wet a couple times. <laughs> Wait, I think Wade looks the youngest, but I think that's just because he's clean shaven and he's thin. <laughs> you know what's you know what's interesting though is okay if you look, think of the music industry and how it's been. Let's say let's go back from like the '80s until 2010, for example. Like hypothetically, what I'm thinking is the way the industry was created, right? Um, like corporations, like uh, what's what's like a music um warner music okay like warner would basically like pigeonhole a band or a group into like hey you know we sign a contract for we want 10 albums in the next five years or whatever the fuck it is right yeah. um and then when those was when and they'll sign the deal when they're like 19 years old 22 25 whatever the hell so that basically when they're 35 years or just under 40 years old like basically if you think about it technically they're unless they're like superstars their careers kind of like are basically over right the contract's over the career is over but nowadays right 2021 with social media and being like the master of your own creation kind of thing like you could be like 50 years old and your music career could fucking soar right out right out of the gate yeah. at 50 yeah. years old do you know you what have I mean? to be that's the difference 20. well i mean a perfect example yeah. would be someone like sturgill simpson you know like he's not 50 but, you know, he didn't start getting into the music industry till he was like 36. Like yep. that was when he started. Yeah. And, you know, in a very short amount of time, he skyrocketed, you know, mm -hmm. but I mean, that's also, he puts out quality material, you know, right. He's definitely someone I really look up to because everything, he always throws these curveballs at you and everything he does is just different. Do you think yep. also maybe another reason why that could be happening is because he's a little bit older, he knows what kind of things to watch out for so that he doesn't like, you know, like, sign a stupid deal at 22 years old definitely he's got, he's got some wisdom for sure yeah yeah yeah, yeah exactly right yeah, anyone who's been in the military and i speak from personal experience knows that after you've gotten out of that contract you're very hesitant to ever sign it. <laughs> right yeah yeah you know um yeah uh that being said though i mean there's always a part of me that wishes that we all could have met when we were like you know 22 and, you know, our backs were maybe a little stronger for sleeping in vans. And we were, <laughs> you know, probably more speaking for myself, like I like a shower every day. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I'm kind of got used to that. Yeah. But um, come on. <laughs> every other day. But at that point, we wouldn't have been able to write these songs the way they sound well, because yeah. we weren't those people. Like at 22, I was a fucking idiot, you know, and I was an <laughs> asshole. And I mean, we, I guess we did. SDS's album came out when I was 22, I think. Yeah. And like the songs, are good. wow, That's... stand behind the songs, but you know, they weren't going to get us anywhere. Right. It was fun and it was a stepping stone to get us where we are now. That's it, everything. They were I've... way too long. Remember, we listened to those songs like uh, not too long ago. We used to have a habit of writing like every single song was like six minutes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. As like, a punk band? A yeah, six minute right? punk club. What? I know. That's like three songs in one. Yeah. Basically, like, we had like double albums. <laughs> and you would do that purposeful, like purposely. We just didn't know any better. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it was just we. Well, and it's not that like there's nothing wrong with that, you know, because it is art. Yeah. And art like speaks for itself. You know what I mean? So it was just we, we didn't fully understand, you know, uh, trimming the fat. Hmm. You know, we had a lot of filler when it just all needed to be killer. Yeah. Right, yeah. right. right. Yeah, so that's where where Aspen once again helped us out big time. Oh yeah, yeah. Just like helping helping us be able to trim the trim the fat because even with Cadillac, we had our songs were like five six minute, minutes long and yeah, every single song we'd play for him, he'd just kind of be like, okay, let's 
Let's cut that one down. Yeah. <laughs> to three and a half minutes. And gone. that's got to be a hard thing to do. Like on, if you put yourself in his shoes, right? You should have seen Jit's face. The first song <laughs> that we did. Yeah. What, was it like heartbreaking? Just fear. Oh, it was like, I want to kill him. <laughs> <laughs> but with everything, you know, uh, I'm nothing if not adaptable. And now when we go in, you know, I'm grateful that happened. It needed to happen, you know, right. we kind of needed to get knocked down a little bit in order to fully understand it. And now when we, when we write and when we go back into it in that way, those are the first things yeah. we think about. And we're really sort of like conscious of that. And our songwriting process has gotten easier because of that, because right. we're going, well, what really matters here and mm -hmm. what's extra, what don't we need? Yeah. Yeah. You know, like the last time we did a songwriting session, like it was awesome. Shit came together like fucking that. Oh, it was it was so good, man. It was, yeah, it, it was a lot of fun. Honestly. Yeah. Speaking of fun and songs, should I play another one for you guys here? Yes, Hell please. Yeah. Cool. This one is the uh, starting song off of uh, the album El Dorado. Uh, it's a song called Ruthless. I wrote the song back in Vancouver and we've been able to take it to I mean, it's just a banger of a song. So it's a shame with both these ones that I'm playing that the whole band isn't here because that's how it's supposed to be played. And in both of these songs, there's songs that Nick has guitar solos in and they're just fucking killer. Like they make the songs as far as I'm concerned. But uh, yeah, if you like what you hear here, go, ch go check it out on the album. Anyway, this is Ruthless. Just kidding. and drink my fill smoke my cigarettes and pop my pills I can't fake it no I just ain't that way wanna be the bad guy just wasn't born that way be the villain in an old film manipulate all my lovers will i want to be cruel and break those hearts it's more rough and i'm torn apart i can't fake it no i just ain't that way want to be the bad guy Through floorboards like gasoline. Light my match and I flee the scene. Leave it all behind, that's my dream. I can fake it, no, I just ain't that way. Wanna be the bad guy, just wasn't born that way. I can fake it, no. Wanna be ruthless till my end of days. Hey. Yeah. Yes. That one gets me lightheaded every time. That one that fucking <laughs> make my eyes water, man.
Is it on? I don't know. Is yeah, it? I'm on. Okay. My yeah. eyes got a little watery there. I don't know why. Oh, yeah. Mine too. Got a little emotional. It's good, man. Uh, I like yeah, it. Thanks. Appreciate it. Yeah. If you Love like what you're to... go check out the album. Yes. Do that. Available at no stores near you. <laughs> <laughs>